Dale and Jerry here with Rescue Methods, and we want to do an expansion on what we shot almost four years ago now on using an MPD as a descent control device and as part of the hub of an ascending uh, application. This started out as a novelty when CMC MPDs first came out. We wanted to truly test the capability of multi-purpose device, um, and that's what we came up with challenging ourselves with configuring it into an ascending component, then turned into a descending component. Uh, it is now becoming a reality, and the reason it's becoming a reality is more and more departments we are finding are buying large quantities of MPDs because they do so many different applications. So if you have enough MPDs in your cache, you now have a, a, a hardware, a piece of hardware or a resource that truly allows you to be this versatile. All the other descent control devices we're going to use, primarily scarabs, brake bar racks, eights, anything along those lines, are not going to give you two-dimensional approaches. So you can descend on them, but they're not going to allow you to seamlessly convert into ascending. So here's the ascending component, and then Jerry's going to cover the descending component. When we start, we're going to ring into the MPD. It's already placed in. Jerry's going to hit that a little more in depth on his component. We're coming up where the hand position is on the rig. The load position is obviously the anchor point. And when we bring this up, we're going to take an ascender. It can be any type of ascender you want to use. We're going to rake that ascender onto the line. In this application, we're using a Gibbs. We're then going to take a single or a double pulley. The nice thing about this setup is you kind of have some choices about how much mechanical advantage you need. So we train a lot of students and ascending is one of the more challenging applications. If you don't have the fitness level uh, to move your own body mass on rope, putting a double up here is going to give you a lot more versatility for greater mechanical advantage. So I'll show you the rig with the double. We'll do a single and a double. If I rig this double in up here, I'm going to start by taking one rope doing a single wrap through one side side plate. Locking it back in. And then I can bring that back down to my MPD. If I am physically capable of climbing with that, what I have in, in actuality created is a two to one on my MPD with a change of direction up here at the ascender. So when I want to climb, I'm going to advance my ascender up maximum arm length, let it set, and then the whole ascent is driven by arm strength. So I'm going to load the device, I'm going to pull up on a rope, walk up the wall if I can. Uh, it's not physically challenging. The nice thing about the MPD is it's going to mine my progress. Okay, so as soon as I stop, MPD has the load. I can then reset and go right back at it. If I start with this configuration and I'm really struggling with moving my own body weight, that's where having that double in up top and having a secondary single ready to go is going to help that a lot. I'm going to take my single, I'm going to rig in, and I'm going to attach this to the becket on the MPD. Then I'm going to redirect this back up to the double, the open side, and put that in. This is the traveling portion, so I've got one in and one out. I've got one coming down and one coming out of this moving pulley, which gives me two units of tension right here. I'm redirected back up to this pulley, one in, one out. No units of tension there, coming down. One in, one out on my MPD gives me an additional two units of tension at the MPD, giving me a total of a four to one mechanical advantage on this. So with this single pulley and adding the double, you're jumping from a two to one to a four to one. Every possible rescuer should be able to move their own body weight with this much mechanical advantage built into the system. Pull until it collapses, extend it again, get it all the way up to maximum arm length, reset, and start your pull again. You'll have a lot of resets, but when we have our students go through the NFPA requirement of ascending that 20 to 30 feet, changing over, and then descending, this makes the ascent feasible for a lot of guys that don't have the fitness level to do that normally. So it is becoming more of a reality than a novelty. 
When it comes time to descend, and Jerry's going to hit all the uh, specifics of rigging for the descent and get ready to do that, it's very easy now to just simply unrig. Before I'm going to come down and lose all my control of these components, one thing I want to make certain of is that I set my parking brake. So I'm going to set my parking brake on the MPD, put my soft lock on there, and now I'm in a safe position to be able to unrig all these components since I'm not controlling the rope. I'm set there. I'm going to take my pulleys out of the equation. And then lastly, I'm going to go up and get my cinder. I'm now in a position, undo my soft lock, take my parking brake off. I'm not going to cover the specifics of the descent, Jerry's going to get into that, but I just seamlessly transferred over to the descent. So, it truly is a multi-purpose device. I just want to make sure you guys are, like I say, oriented with how to rig this in when you're descending with this device. Okay. I always use the diagram on the back, and I orient it like it's going to be hooked to me. Okay. So I'm going to orient it this way um, to where when I clip it in, it's going to clip in right to my harness on that carrying meter. All right. Follow your diagram on the back. The load signifier here is now going to become your anchor that's tied off. Okay. When you guys did it with the blade, the load was your rescuer or the load that you were lowering down. So orient this, self like, orient this device um, to yourself like you're going to lower with it. Bring your line down. Obviously that line is going to my anchor. So I'm going to take a loop of rope or a bite of rope right here. I'm going to lay it across the plate. All right? When I rotate the plate, then I'm going to load it into the device. Once I get it loaded into the device, I'll take a look at it again. That's my load coming out. This is my hand control. All right. I'm going to bring that down. Clip it into my carabiner or on my harness. Okay. The first thing you want to do before you even mess with the toggle, your control hand. Pull that control hand, pull that rope down through that friction device. Okay. That's where all your control is going to be. Once I have a hold of that and it's pulled tight, then I'll grab my toggle, pull out on the toggle, rotate it counterclockwise, okay? I can fully open the toggle, and as long as I have good friction control right here, I'm not going to go anywhere, right? As soon as I want to move, I start releasing a little bit of tension right there, and I start to travel. Okay? If I want to stop, pull down on the friction device, and you can let go of the toggle, and you're going to stop, all right? To lock off tie off with the MPD, <clears throat> obviously let go of your toggle. You already have the hand control right here through the primary friction device, bring it inside the secondary friction device, loop it through, and then take your bite of rope. Bring it up, like Dale was showing you, just wrap it right around your hand, around your fingers, stick it through my palm, replace my fingers with that bite of rope. Tighten that down, and now your hand's free, okay? Hang it here, there's your lock off tile. Undo it. Undo your lock off tie off. Take it out of the secondary friction device. That's the first thing I want to do before I start traveling. Friction. Friction right there before I even mess with the toggle. 
I have friction. Pull out on the toggle. Fully open it. The travel, I just start releasing tension. Okay. Any questions? Pretty easy.